This Sunday's verse comes from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, out of the NRSV translation. Verse 9 says, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to, dis to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? Discernment is the ability to judge well. Being able to judge well between good and evil will help us become closer to God. But how does this happen? It comes so long as we ask for it. This verse, uh, verse 9, is spoken by King Solomon, son of David, who asked for help in discerning between good and evil. Reading further on, we see that verse 10 says, It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. Verse 11 says, God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Ever since I first gave my life completely to the Lord, God has done a lot of work on me, and He is still working on me. I am a continual work in progress, and I hope that everyone realizes that about themselves as well. Every day is a new challenge, every day is a new day to begin, to take in and learn what we can. Um, I used to want the boatload of money, I used to want the nice big house, I used to want a lot of things, but for me, all I want these days after realizing um, the mistakes I was making is to know and do God's will and whatever that might entail. I have asked for the same things that King Solomon had asked of the Lord back in his day. I know that it is the right things to ask for because it pleased the Lord that King Solomon had done so as it says in verse 10. I ask for help with discernment from the Lord. I need to know what is right and what is wrong and how to handle things in the best way in order to glorify Him and Him alone and not myself. It's hard to tell, especially at first and especially since I am so early in my walk with the Lord, still, when God is speaking to me and when He is trying to tell me something. I have really been able to pick, on, um, pick up on some occasions when this happens, but sometimes I also find that I think I know what God is saying to me, but in reality I have no clue. I know it's wrong because something happens later on that tells me I was wrong, which is good. You know, it's being a work in progress. So I ask the Lord for guidance in everything I do. I stop and I talk to God whenever I need to. First uh, Thessalonians 5.17 says to pray without ceasing. So I gladly obey. For me, it's easy to talk to God because I know he really hears everything and that he knows what is really in my heart. The important thing with discernment is to never give up and always uh, give your heart completely to God, first and foremost, before all things. The second part of verse 9 talks about governing a great people. As I thought about this verse a little more, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if the politicians in our country had this mindset? So, before I go on further, I'm not going to or am intending to get into politics with this question. It is what it is, it's just a question, something to, uh, something to think about. If our politicians discerned more between good and evil, we might be in better shape as a whole in this great country of ours and even around the whole world. Our founding fathers founded this country in faith to God. If you didn't believe in God, you suffered consequences back in that uh, time. So I want to touch a little more on 1 Kings 3.11. And uh, just a reminder, it said... God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. So I sat down and wrote this uh, uh, Sunday verse reflection on Thanksgiving Day. And by the way, I hope that everyone had a most blessed Thanksgiving Day. This actually ties very well into the founding uh, of this country, the United States. I would like to quote from our 16th President Abraham Lincoln about Thanksgiving from his Thanksgiving proclamation in 1863. At the time of this proclamation, the nation is divided by a bloody civil war, pitting father against son and brother against brother. Few people had much to be thankful for. In the midst of all this, President Abraham Lincoln took the extraordinary step of declaring a national day of Thanksgiving, an annual holiday, to observe the blessing the almighty uh, blessings the almighty had seen fit to bestow upon a fractured people so now i quote the year that is drawing toward its close 
has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever-watchful providence of Almighty God. Needful diversions of wealth and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The axe has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines, as well of iron and coal as of the precious metals, have yielded even more abundantly than um, heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country. Rejoicing in the conscious of augmented s strength and vigor is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. No human counsel, uh, counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do, therefore, invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father, who dwelleth in the heavens, and I recommend to them that, while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, they also, with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged, and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the, of the nation, and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes, uh, divine purposes, to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. And I end quote. This proclamation is applicable then as it is now. If you're not familiar with the parable of the ten lepers who were healed by God, I recommend reading it. It can be found in Luke uh, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. In a nutshell, what happens is Jesus heals ten lepers, but only one goes back to him in thanksgiving. The other nine don't give Jesus a second thought. Have you ever been one of the nine that takes your blessings for granted? How many of us give thanks to God on a regular basis, or how many of us don't? Just like verse 11 says again, God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Giving, giving thanks and praise to God and asking him for help to discern between right and wrong, good and evil. Um, James 1.5 says, If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. Just like uh, King Solomon did in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. So my prayer for each and every one of us is that we continually seek God and give thanks and praise to Him for all the blessings in our lives. I also pray that each one of us asks and receives the blessing of discernment from God, and that we stop and pray to God continually for guidance, and that we pray for peace not only for our own country but for the whole world as well.